Okay, so if you're looking for some excitement, you may consider going down a zip line. And if you don't know what a zip line is, I'll explain that in just one second. But uh, that might be a, a little bit risky for some of you. So, you know, you just might want to stick with uh, math word problems because they're equally as exciting as going down a zip line. But uh, I got a bonus here for you. We're going to have a lot of excitement because I have a math word problem about a zip line. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is the following. You just slid down a 900 foot zip line. To get back to the tower, it's 700 feet. How tall is the tower? Let me go ahead and uh, kind of make sure some of you out there have no confusion about what a zip line is. Basically, you see these things at parks and whatnot. There's a big tower. You climb up the tower, and on the top, there is a line that you basically hold on to, and you slide all the way down. So this particular problem, I'm going to kind of set this up for you. I guess I'm giving you a bit of a hint because I just don't want to, uh, to have any confusion because I want to give you guys a full opportunity to solve this. But the length of the uh, what you just kind of rode down from the top of the tower down to the bottom, that's 900 feet in this particular problem. Then you got to walk back 700 feet. I'm looking for the height of the tower. Okay, so I gave you a massive hint there. And if you could figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. And then, of course, I'll walk through the solution step by step. But uh, again, I wanted to make sure all of you understood this problem because maybe not all of you understand what a zip line is. Matter of fact, I don't even know what a zip or I know what a zip line is, of course. But uh, way back in the good old days, uh, we didn't really think of things in terms of zip lines. When I was in the Marine Corps, the United States Marine Corps, uh, we went down something similar to a zip line, but it was called the slide for life. And uh, that was pretty exciting stuff indeed. Okay, but uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and uh, I've been teaching middle and high school math for decades, and it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. The correct answer is approximately 565.68 feet. But uh, if you basically got pretty close to this number, that indicates to me that you did this problem right. And we have to celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus, A 100%, and multiple stars. So you can brag to your friends and family that you are a certified professional expert in the area of solving right triangle word problems using the Pythagorean theorem. Now, when you tell your family members that, they're going to basically be like, I have no idea what you just said. But I'm pretty sure you're going to be uh, pretty uh, wealthy one day. Maybe you'll be like this engineer at NASA. I'm going to take you out to dinner because you just never know. But uh, anyways, great job if you figure this out. Now, for those of you that didn't get this right, don't despair. This is actually a pretty easy problem. Uh, but the key here is to understand uh, kind of what's going on and try to basically set you up for success right here. But let's go ahead and get into the solution. And this is really important uh, stuff because we're going to be talking about right triangles, and again, this Pythagorean theorem, which is probably one of the most useful, important formulas in all of mathematics, especially, obviously, geometry. But uh, anyways, uh, we have this math word problem. What is step number one when you're faced with a math word problem? Well, it's a good idea to read the problem. Now, some of you are like, come on, Mr. YouTube Math Man, don't waste my time. Well, when I mean read the problem, read it at least three times. Okay, you got to read the problem, read it again, really make sure you understand uh, what's going on, the details. And then you need to kind of visualize the problem. Always try to model a problem because that way you can kind of see the solution or you can interpret what's going on visually. Now, some problems are uh, easier to do than others, but uh, this particular problem, you know, uh, should be pretty easy to interpret. So we have this zip line, okay? We just slid down a 900 foot uh, zip line, and now we have to walk back 700 feet to the tower, and then, of course, we have to climb up the tower. We wanna know how tall is the tower. So let's go ahead and kind of come up with a sketch. Now, it doesn't have to be uh, as pretty as mine, but something along this line. Okay, so we have this tower, 
and you just uh, went 900 feet down. You just slid down 900 feet to the bottom. Now, one thing about this uh, problem and all math problems is you have to oversimplify. You have to interpret and you even have to kind of assume. So some of you might be saying, oh, well, what if the zip line is like this? Because in real life, a zip line is not going to be a perfect straight line. I get it. Uh, but we're, you know, you kind of have to kind of read between the line with these problems. You never want to say, hey, Mr. Uh, teacher or Mr. and Mrs. Teacher, uh, how do you know the zip line's not like this? And then, you know, of course, the tower could kind of be leaning. Well, listen, you have to, you just kind of have to make those assumptions with a basic problem like this. Now, of course, in real life, uh, or more um, using more advanced mathematics, if this was an actual, actual like engineering problem, yes, of course, we would consider those other factors and then you're going to be uh, bringing in some physics and some other type of uh, engineering involved. But uh, we don't have to make it that complex. So we have to simplify the situation. So we have this tower and you slid down 900 feet to the bottom. And now to get back to the tower, it's 700 feet. So there's another thing that we want to consider here. That of course, the slide down to the bottom is a perfect straight line. But we also want to consider that our tower is not uh, leaning. So uh, basically, this is going to be a right angle. It's going to be perpendicular to the ground. Okay, so hopefully uh, that's how most of you interpreted this problem. And what you have right here is a right triangle. You can see our triangle right here, and it's a right triangle because this right here is 90 degrees. And right triangle problems are everywhere in geometry and mathematics, and they're very easy to solve, especially if you know this thing. And what I'm going to be talking about is called the Pythagorean theorem. But actually, let me go ahead and um, uh, finish up my uh, train of thought here. So once you have a model uh, like this in the situation, we can see that we have a triangle. So we want to just kind of focus in and just kind of interpret this as a triangle problem. And the question is, we want to find the height of the tower. Okay, this right here. So we could just kind of um, distill this figure down into a right triangle. And basically what we want to do is find this length of the right triangle. Okay, now... Because this is a right triangle, i.e. one of the angles in the triangle is 90 degrees, well, that really um, uh, allows us to bring in all kinds of tools that are not available to us in other types of triangles, okay, like uh, acute triangles or obtuse triangles. Uh, now, there is something that you could use, all right, and I'll just kind of tell you what it is uh, for those of you that are into advanced mathematics. Uh, we're talking about things called the law of sines and the law of cosines. Now, this is some really good stuff. And by the way, if you're interested in learning some uh, advanced trigonometry with me, I'll leave a link to my pre-calculus course uh, in the description uh, of this video. And I teach you everything about this and all kinds of other nice advanced stuff. But uh, typically, uh, when you have right triangles, all the only thing you need to solve for the lengths of uh, you know, any of the lengths in a right triangle is the Pythagorean theorem. And that's this right here. This is one of the most important uh, formulas or theorems that you need to know. Okay. Now, when you see a right triangle, you want to, uh, you want to instantaneously think of this. Okay. Pythagorean theorem. So um, anyways, let's go ahead and see how this works. So if this is just a relationship between the sides. So the first thing that you need to know is that the longest side of a right triangle is something called the hypotenuse, okay, the hypotenuse. And here we have some variables, A, a B, and C. So when we're using the Pythagorean theorem, the, all you need to remember is that C, okay, always represents the hypotenuse, okay, this right here, all right? So this C squared. Now, what this formula is saying Okay, or this uh, theorem, to be uh, precise, is saying the following. Okay, if we take the square of this side, okay, and then we add it to the square of this side, it's going to be the same as the square of this side. Okay, so a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So if you can remember that, okay, and the big thing here is just remember this uh, uh, side, this c squared, is the square uh, of the hypotenuse. Okay, so we're going to put this... Uh, into action to solve for this uh, variable right here. And we're just going to do some basic algebra to do that. So that is what's coming up next. But first, I'm going to show you this right here. 
and that is a gentle request to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, the reason I'm asking you is it's important. It's important to the growth of my channel, and that's important. It's important that is important to me because it helps me grow and reach more students. Okay, everybody that watches my videos, and thank you so much for uh, you know sharing or you know spending your precious time with me. So I really try to deliver some sort of valuable content. But whether you're just interested in math or you're struggling in math uh, in particular, you know I want to be a uh, you know a messenger of hope. Please never ever ever give up on learning mathematics. And some of you out there may remember a bad experience with math. Maybe I was 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. And uh, you, people walk around thinking, eh, I'm not good in math. I'm not good in this. I'm not, that's, you never want to think in those terms, okay? So if you're struggling in math, uh, don't give up. What you need is clear and understandable instruction, and you've just got to build up your skills, okay? So I'm really trying to reach those people, and by you subscribing, it does help me out. Sorry to, uh, to be so long-winded about that. But this is an important message for me. And if you're going to do that, might as well hit that notification bell as well. All right. So now let's go ahead and apply the Pythagorean theorem to this problem. Okay. So we have a right triangle. We have the hypotenuse, right, which is the slide. That's 900 feet. We have this distance, which is the walk back to the tower. And so X will represent uh, our unknown value, and this, of course, represents the height of the tower. So we're going to solve for x. Now, you could have the variable a or the variable x. You could use any variables. For example, let's suppose I wanted to use x right there, y right here, or z right here. Well, I would just write the formula x squared plus y squared is equal to z squared. Okay, so as long as you remember that you... Uh, Square use the, the sum of the square of the sides is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. You will be good to go. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. Let's square this side. So x squared is uh, x uh, squared is x times x or x squared plus 700 squared is going to be equal to 900 squared. All right, so this is the setup. And if you understand this, uh, the only thing that's uh, really left to do is to solve this lovely equation. All right, so let's go ahead and do that now. And what we have here is a quadratic equation, right? So this x squared indicates that this is a quadratic equation, meaning there will be uh, two solutions, but I'll talk about that in just one second. But let's go ahead and do this math. So 700 squared is going to be 490,000. 900 squared is going to be uh, 810, uh, 000. And so we have x squared plus this number is equal to that number. So we want to isolate x squared. We want to get this on one side of the equation and all of our numbers to the other side. So even though we're dealing with some bigger numbers here, no big deal. We could just simply be nice and uh, neat and organized. So we're going to subtract 490,000 from both sides of the equation. We'll add down in a column manner. So uh, uh, 810 uh, 000, 000 minus 490,000 is going to be 320,000. So x squared is equal to 320,000. So to solve for x, what we need to do is take uh, the square root of both sides. All right, so you go into your calculator. So the square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 30 to 20,000 is approximately uh, 565.68. Now, because this is a quadratic equation, this x squared, that indicates that there will be two solutions. But in this case, we want the height of a tower. The height, you know, the height of the tower is not going to be a negative number, so we'll just keep the positive version of this answer. Okay, so this is just a kind of simple application to solving right triangle problems, but this is um, extremely important for those of you that are, you know, in basic math, you know, the Pythagorean theorem is taught. You know, you're not, you don't have to wait until you, uh, until you get into like high school level geometry or trigonometry, but you have to understand this theorem. This, this um, uh, theorem is the foundation to trigonometry, okay? Uh, it is just extremely, extremely important. But anyways, I try to make up fun and interesting problems that, uh, you know, uh, don't make math so boring. Now, again, if you uh, need more help with geometry, basic geometry or Pythagorean theorem, let me give you a couple suggestions. One, you can um, find uh, all this stuff in any one of my courses uh, below, except for my Math Foundations course. That's my basic math course. But my pre-algebra course, if you want to learn more, you know, uh, kind of focused geometry, then I got a full geometry course. If you want to learn, you know, trigonometry and whatnot, that would be included in my pre-calculus course. 
Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.